Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Itch here, and today we have a battle replay sent in by Mr. Teufel featuring the Chaos Dwarfs with the Double Death Shrieker rocket launchers. Now, these are some interesting artillery firepower as they can provide some devastating damage against infantry, and if need be, they can switch into high precision guided rockets to snipe out enemy monsters or single entities. Now for the rest of the army, a lot of goblin laborers and also some of them orc laborers absorbing hits for the more elite Chaos Dwarf frontline in the form of Chaos Dwarf warriors, some of them with great weapons. On the flanks, we have some bull center renders with great weapons, one of the best unit in the entire Chaos Dwarf roster, providing some very nice anti-large armor piercing melee power. In disguise, a sorcerer prophet of Hashut leading the Chaos Dwarf army. Providing some nice spell support including the Dark Subjugation to lower enemy leadership and melee defense as well as the Flames of Asgore to devastate enemy infantry. On the side as well there is some Enfeebling Foe cast as well as the Withering since the Sorcerer Prophet is mounted on a Lama suit. On the other side the Chaos Dwarfs enemies, the Legion of the Other Dark Gods, Chaos Undivided. A front line of Chaos Warriors with great weapons in the middle, on the flanks there are the monstrous killing power in the form of Summoners of Rage, Dragon Ogres that also has Chain Lightning spell cast. And leading the army are Kion the Ever Chosen, providing Spirit Leech as well as some elite melee power in the form of Slayer of Kings as well as the armor of Morkar, buffing up his damage as well as melee defense. There's also fight or die for some attack and leadership buffs, and then searing doom for bombarding enemy infantry. On the other flank there are even more monster killing power in the form of weird spawns. Not only are they great damage dealers, they also can sunder enemy armor, and this allows the demon spew for Saken to maximize their damage by hitting the now weakened enemy infantry. There's also a couple Chaos Warhounds Vanguard deployed in the trees. Now these are not the only vanguard mobility for the Chaos army. On the opposite side of the battlefield, there are some Hell Striders and Chaos Warhounds hidden in the tree lines. That's it for the army builds, now let's get the battle started. So with all the tree lines here blocking the line of sight of firing angles, we'll be doing a bit fast forward here as the warriors of Chaos army are marching forward trying to get into a position to wrap around the formations of the Chaos Dwarves while the Chaos Dwarves are opening fire at the Summoners of Rage here. Trying to use the Death Freaker Rocket's Precision Fire, the single rocket mode, to shoot down the summoners, but unfortunately with all the trees here blocking those shots, this would not be an effective approach. At the same time, the Chaos player is placing a lot of his killing power onto this one single flank. The Chaos Dwarfs will be maneuvering some of the Bosantos here to mirror the movement of their opponent in case they rush in and the Bosantos needs to counter charge. Now with the Warriors of Chaos sneakily hiding in the trees to avoid artillery fire, the Rockets will be targeting the Chaos Warriors instead, and as you can see here, with the, such a high firing angle, the shots can easily go over the trees and land hits on the Chaos Warriors, so as long as the Chaos Warriors are not within the tree line, they will not be protected by any cover. And the Death Shrieker Rockets can do some pretty nasty damage against the densely packed armored infantry. Now over here, a mobility engagement has begun as the Summoners of Rage charging uphill against the Bull Santos here. The Summoners of Rage seems to be getting an upper hand due to the Warhound and Archeon support, but they are now debuffed by Enfeebling Foe and the Vial of Hashut. This helps the Bull Santos to trade relatively even against the Dragon Ogres, and don't forget, the Lore of Hashut has one of the most OP spell in the entire game. Especially with all the fire weakness stacking, the Summoners of Rage is absolutely being deleted by the devastating area of effect spell. Everything else in the vicinity is also getting devastated other than Archaeon. And that one spell almost finished off the entire left flank of the Warriors of Chaos army. The Summoners are only holding on because of their Regiment of Renown status. The Bull Santos though took a lot of friendly fire from that Flame of Asgore, so unfortunately we'll have to pull back, while the second unit of fresh Bull Santos with great weapons will be charging towards the Summoners of Rage. Archeon will try to intercept here, but that is not quite enough, and he seems to be staggering for a bit for some reason, and just kind of dropped the attack. So, unfortunate for the Summoners of Rage, they will be finished off by the Bull Santos, while there is a little bit of precision fire sniping Archeon here. The Death Shrieker Rockets have switched their targets onto Archeon the Ever Chosen and already doing some noticeable damage to the Chaos Lord. On the other flank here, the Demon Spew and the Weird Spawns are plowing their way through all those Goblin Laborers and whatnot, so Chaos Dwarf Warriors will be holding the line. Now more rockets are coming in the way of Archaeon, especially when debuffed by the flammable shot of the Sorcerer Prophet. 
He is taking substantial damage from the armor-piercing projectiles. It even has the anti-large trait, so even more damage against Archeon who is mounted on his horse. Now some of you might have already seen this rocket, which did a 90 degree turn, though unfortunately not able to make it. Another shot comes in, but this time doing a bit more of a friendly fire instead of actually hitting Archeon. In the front line, Chaos Dwarf infantry are holding back a tide of heavy metal Chaos Warriors. They might be suffering casualties from the armor-piercing great weapons, but they are holding indeed, while Archeon the Ever Chosen is now tied down by the Goblin Laborers, while the Bull Santos will be rushing back to surround him, buying time for the Death Shrieker to regroup, while the other Death Shrieker rocket is still indeed firing. Searing Doom coming in, Chipping away some health of the Bull Santos, doing some nice damage, but unfortunately, Archeon is still suffering heavily at the hands of all those armor piercing anti large damage. On the other side, the Weird Spawns are fighting Bull Santo with great weapons and some Chaos Dwarf Warriors, while the Demon Spew are trying to flank around and start getting onto the artillery line here, but unfortunately being intercepted by the Chaos Dwarf Warriors. Now, Archeon, getting extremely low in health, needs to retreat and hide perhaps in the trees, and instead let his armored infantry to make a push and do some work. However, the Bull Santos have spotted these infantry breaching through the front line and they'll be quickly countercharging and finishing off the rather tattered Chaos Warriors as they have suffered from a Flames of Asgore earlier that I missed. As you can see here, a lot of dead bodies laying around the ground, some of them goblins, some of them Chaos Dwarfs, and of course some of them the Warriors of Chaos. Right next to them, some Chaos Dwarf Warriors are holding, while Archeon is still suffering heavily at the hands of all those Death Freaker rockets. Down to 1000 HP, this one rocket missed, but there are more rockets coming in and Archeon is getting his morale lowered by the attack by artillery effect. And after all the heavy damage he has taken, his leadership is not holding up. A Spirit Leech is draining away the health of the Bull Santos, but that is not enough burst damage. And Archeon, suffering another hit from the Death Shrieker rocket, will inevitably rout, being surrounded by enemy units and sniped out by precision fire. The tracking mechanic of these Death Shrieker rockets are just so good, almost like the powerful blue fire. The weird spawn are still stuck on enemy infantry, while the one regrouped Hellstrider will try to surround the Death Shrieker rocket, but unfortunately with one final rocket, Archeon goes down. This puts a massive dent in the balance of power and the leadership of the Warriors of Chaos. All these Chaos Warriors will easily rout under the terror of the Lamasu, and army losses will be quickly triggered. With that, it seems like Hashut might be the superior Chaos God. Despite many players not exactly having a high opinion on the Death Shrieker rocket launchers, they are actually a pretty solid precision firepower with their target seeking missiles. Both of them did some solid damage in the game by sniping out Archeon with the consistent firepower. The tracking mechanic means that even if Archeon is on the move, it is hard for him to dodge all the rockets coming his way. As for the other unit here, Bull Center renders, as usual, a very solid anti-large armor-piercing unit, although one of them being charged by Archeon himself and the uh, Summoners of Rage. They suffered heavy casualties, especially when hit by their own Flames of Asgore. Speaking of Flames of Asgore, Sorcerer Prophet of Hashut getting over 2000 gold worth of damage value, burning through a whole lot of the Warriors of Chaos hard hitting units, including the Regiment of Renowned Dragon Ogres and some of these Hell Striders. As for the rest of the army here, the Chaos Dwarf infantry didn't really got a good trade against the heavy metal Warriors of Chaos. As you can see here, the Warriors of Chaos all got some solid kills on both the Chaos Dwarf Warriors and the Puny Laborers, getting zero kills throughout the entire game. They are a cowardly unit that hits like wet noodles. The Orc Laborers didn't have a good time either, trading against much better infantry than them, and they got absolutely destroyed by a combination of Chaos Warriors and perhaps some of these Demon Spew, who slaughtered many goblins and orcs, getting some solid kill count, but unfortunately they are just killing chaff, so not a lot of damage value. The Weird Spawn as well, doing some pretty nasty kills, but overall not a lot of damage in total, while the Summoners of Rage being hit by anti-large armor piercing Bull Santa renders, and then being burned incinerated by the Flames of Asgore, definitely not having a good time whatsoever. While Archeon himself, before he can do too much damage in melee, he just got sniped by all those rocket launchers. As for the infantry, they did some pretty nasty kills, but unfortunately two of them not getting much value here, so they could not carry the game. 
Mobility wise, there's not a lot of good targets for them to charge, so the Warhounds did very minimal damage. While the Hellstriders of Slanesh, we were there when they got burned to a crisp, so unfortunately not much damage for them either. And that's it for today's multiplayer battle. I hope viewers you all enjoy it and if you want to see more Total War Warhammer content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out the video archives. That's all for today and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.